welcome back to another shakachi lesson it's definitely been a while since i've made one of these uh but i was promised on the recent live streams i did i was going to make a video about poise and posture uh, i decided to record it the same day as the live stream um, just while the ideas are fresh uh it's actually been a a fairly common topic amongst all of my students recently that in our lessons is talking about the setup um and so i when i teach my lessons and when I do a lot of the performances, I either am sitting in seiza or I'm standing. Um, I I personally prefer standing just because I know I can control my weight a little bit more and where I send my weight. Uh, but the, the concept for both the sitting and standing are the same. So I'm going to talk about it in terms of seiza, uh, so sitting on your knees. Um, and then I will also talk about it uh, as well in terms of standing. Though. So the, the, the thing that I... That I, that I started to notice when I was doing the Jinashi series is that a lot of my music was on the ground. And uh, what was happening is that I would naturally lean over like this and to look down at the music when I was playing before I, you know, um, not, not, not this dramatically, I didn't have to lean forward like that much, but just, just a little bit down. And I started to notice the, a curve that was happening in, in my back. And what I noticed is that the pitch of my instrument started to fall. And it's not the actually it's not my instrument's fault. It's my fault because I'm leaning forward, and by leaning forward, I drop the pitch. And then what was happening afterward? In order to compensate for that, I was pulling out the instrument to the side. And you can already hear how much weaker and less contact of a tone that I have versus here. So how to how to develop um, a better poise for for your uh, for your playing, um, and I like this word poise more than I like the word posture because posture ref refers to something that is uh, is that's that's set and stuck and unable to move. And for shakachi, we still need to be able to move around to be able to function left and right, move forward and backward when needed needed to. So I'll first start from the side from a side profile this way. And the first thing I'm, I'm going to talk about is how to send your weight uh, properly. Because what, um, what I see a lot of students, especially um, and the stu players and students in the West, tend to lean forward and keep a lot of their weight on their toes or on their thighs, rather than keeping it in their butt or in their heels. So this what I what I think about is I think about the two there's two bones in in our in our butt that are quite that are rounded and sharp and I think that that's where I try to keep the weight when sitting and then if you do that when you're standing all the weight will go into your heels so it's that feeling of just kind of being back slightly then what I do is just I send myself even just a little bit farther back so that way my head has an has a slightly natural up look I'm looking slightly upward then from there what i do is after i have that sitting upright and kind of leaning back slightly a feeling of falling back that's when i bring my arms up and from when i bring my arms up i hold my shakuhachi more with a perpendicular grip rather than a parallel grip and so this perpendicular grip helps with the elbows coming out and up in this outward elbow motion allows for my my chest to be able to expand more because if i'm holding the instrument this way my arms are against my side my arms are in the way here and whether when they're open up it's a lot easier to get the air into my lungs and, and to circulate so from there the other thing that i do as well is while i'm i'm in the sit back relaxed more more feel i try to feel the air coming down my spine and through and all the way to, to like the bottom of my lungs and the bottom of my belly. To get to, to for that sound. And what I notice with with this sort of setup when I'm when I'm sitting this way, I don't feel like I'm really pushing to make the, the sound come out. It just happens a little bit more naturally. Let's, uh, I mean, let me actually change it and let's go to a standing position. Okay, so now in the standing position, I, I do the same thing. So it's typically for me when even I'm just like walking around, I have a tendency to walk on my, on my toes or to be forward. 
um, like always trying to go somewhere and to, to run to the next location rather than trying to keep the weight back on, on my heels. So this back and back feeling of, of groundedness happens where I send the weight all the way down through my hips to the back. I, I feel everything heavily sitting on, on my heels. That way I feel grounded. And they are uh, trying to keep ourselves grounded. And so that groundedness will help us, uh, especially with the keeping the weight in the heels, will help us keep the instrument up and keeping the, the, the focus of the sound. <laughs> Now, if I shift that weight forward onto my toes, I'm already I'm already dropping the instrument. I could lean forward, but then what's going to happen is I'm really unbalanced, and I can already feel the weight kind of a, a lot of the weight pinching in my lower back. And just moving back to the heels, it, the note gets louder. And also I feel there's more core and I also feel like I have more air, but not even that I'm just, I have more air, but I'm using less air to get that sound out. I feel like I have to push really hard. I'm on my toes. I'm standing actually on my tippy toes. And then standing back, I feel like I have that power to push, to push that uh, the air up. So. Uh, again, in, in a standing position to to, re, to go over that point again, I keep all of the weight on my heels, sending all the weight down my legs into the heels. Then, having a perpendicular grip rather than a parallel grip, I send my arms up and I bring the shaka the shakahachi towards me. I don't bring my body towards the shakahachi; it comes to me. Then I keep my elbows up so I can keep my ribs uh, my rib cage free from anything that's blocking it taking that breath in so I can feel all the air coming down the back of my spine all the way into the bottom of my belly. And that's how I, I really approach my, my, uh, my pot, my poise. Let's go back to that sitting uh, position for some final notes. So the final point I want to talk about with this, uh, with poise in, in, in as well, is uh, in addition to where you're keeping your weight, um, one of the things I, I've, I see a lot both in my, um, when I was teaching violin, and this is a, such a common topic for uh, teachers in Western um, pedagogy for classical music is tension. And this this extremely positive tension of grabbing and what like what a lot of teachers call the death grip you know when we're playing violin the a lot of students they they grip the the left hand or the neck of the violin um and so that we, we we what i do to tell my my violin students is you don't need to choke out your violin just keep your hand soft onto the onto the strings same thing with the shakuhachi is that the the fingers should be really soft on top it if I if I hold the shakuhachi vertically, without um, like just this way, without changing how I hold it from here, in this position from the playing position, and I hold this way, it falls through the hands because I'm just I'm just covering the holes enough that the that the you know, the air doesn't come out, but I'm not squeezing them close at all. It's a very light touch, and that's what helps also with moving faster. So combining with that poise of sitting back, having the instrument up, elbows up, keeping the instrument soft, or the, the fingers soft, you can play quickly, you can play slowly, you can play with a full tone, and you're not. And you're, the best part about this sort of position when playing is that you have a lot more air. I hope that this, this video was helpful. If you liked it, make sure to hit the like button, leave a comment on something else that you'd like to learn, and I will see you guys when the next video comes out, which I have no idea when it's going to be.